Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Rex Finance and today we got the lucky fedora, right? I mean, if you guys have watched my channel for a long time now, I mean, I'm up over 10,000 subscribers now, almost 11,000 of you guys. And if you guys have been here since square one, you guys know that this hat has brought me a lot of good luck. So just the sight of me wearing this hat, I'm sure is going to excite a lot of you. And today we're going to be talking about Workhorse, which is a stock I haven't talked about on my channel in just over a month. So I might be kind of recapturing some of my old audience that used to watch all my Workhorse videos because after all, I was the first and only YouTuber to be covering Workhorse stock back when it was less than $3 a share. I recommended buying the stock and that's really where the roots of this fedora got its good luck properties on the channel. So yeah, I am that YouTuber, if you guys remember me, that made that kind of cringy video on Workhorse. The first ever video that was on YouTube about Workhorse stock, though. So, I mean, I'll give myself a break. I'll give myself credit for that one. And obviously, since recommending it at less than $3 a share, the stock price has seen prices over $22 a share at one point in time. And today, we're going to be talking about my price projections, my price targets, four different percentages of the USPS contract that Workhorse could win. So we're going to start with 0% where I think the stock will go. Then we'll go to 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. So this is going to be an exciting video. This is one of those things that I'm surprised I haven't really talked about on my channel yet considering all the videos I've done on Workhorse stock. So in addition to the whole Workhorse scenario, this hat has seen my Clean Spark recommendation when it was under $5 a share and even at $4.50 per share climb to over $13 per share in a very short amount of time at one point. It also has seen LCA stock since I recommended buying it at around $12 a share climb to over $17 a share. In addition to this, I also wore this fedora in a video I did on Lordstown Motors and the stock price of Lordstown was $11 at that time. And we've seen Lordstown stock absolutely explode. And I think that stock is also going to continue to climb and climb. So this hat has seen a lot of success. Some may call it luck. I don't know about that one. But if you guys are interested in receiving buy and sell alerts from me or getting access to the members only discord, yada, 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 hit the join button down below next to the subscribe button for more information on the whole Rex Nation membership and the perks and benefits that you get along with that. In addition to that, I did mention that we're climbing closer and closer to 11,000 subscribers, which is kind of crazy considering I just hit 10,000 this Monday. But if you guys are new or returning and not yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If the subscribe button is not grayed out, if it does not say subscribed, you're doing it wrong and you need to change that as soon as possible. So the last time I did a video on workhorse stock was actually when I did a video on Lordstown Motors on August 3rd, which is exactly one month and one day ago. So it's been a while since I've covered workhorse. So that's just another reason I'm really excited to be doing this video. In addition to this, if we go to my Robinhood stock market portfolio, you can see behind me that I still own all 1500 shares of workhorse stock that I bought at $2.84 of cost basis. So I'm still here. I didn't go anywhere. I did not betray my loyal workhorse fans out there in the audience. Let me know how many shares of workhorse you guys own, as well as how many shares you plan on buying, depending on how much of the contract workhorse actually gets. So I still hold all 1,500 shares. You can see here my cost basis actually says $4.89, but in reality that still is $2.84. The reason it was artificially inflated is because I've swung some shares of workhorse here and there, and Robinhood uses the FIFO method, which means the first shares you buy are always the first shares that you sell, no matter what. So I'm as confident as ever about workhorse right now, and that really is saying something considering I did an entire video explaining why Workhorse is going to win the United States Postal Service contract. No ifs, ands, or buts. I said why I know they are going to win this contract. And I'm as confident as ever, and that means I'm more confident in Workhorse than I was back then. So let me explain to you why that is. So reason number one I'm as confident as ever is because Ford, just two days ago, announced that they would be cutting 1,400 jobs. Now in contrast to this, and I'll put this up on the screen, Workhorse just announced a couple days ago that they are hiring over 200 employees. So this may be obvious to some of you, but why is this so bullish to me, and why does this make me even more confident? 
Well, Ford is firing workers while Workhorse is hiring enough workers to cover a 24-hour shift at their manufacturing facilities. And why this is big is because they're going to have three different shifts, eight hours apiece, and their backlog is only 1,200. Why would Workhorse be hiring enough employees to cover three shifts in a 24-hour period if they only have 1,200 vehicles that they expect to deliver on? And previously, Workhorse has said their goal is to reach about five vehicles manufactured and delivered per day. So the math works out to be that that backlog of 1,200 vehicles would be delivered on within two-thirds of a year. In 240 days, that entire backlog would be gone. And again, why would they be hiring enough shifts to cover a 24-hour period if they knew that all of their backlog was going to be gone in two-thirds of a year? They're clearly expecting lots and lots more demand, whether that's from the United States Postal Service or other companies. It doesn't really matter to me, and that's why I'm confident in Workhorse. In addition to this, Workhorse just announced that they had entered a strategic agreement with Hitachi, who will assess their business operations, their manufacturing, operational, and supply chain capabilities. So this again is just a clear lane of sight to me that Workhorse is expecting to see increased demand for their vehicles because why would they be hiring a, a firm like Hitachi to be assessing their business operations especially their supply chain capabilities so I think the 1200 backlog is going to be gone before we know it and that's going to be replaced with lots and lots more vehicles again whether that's the United States Postal Service vehicles or not this is very bullish for this company on top of these two things, we can see that Workhorse just announced their September 2020 financial conference schedule. And over the next two weeks, they're going to be presenting in front of thousands of potential investors, whether that's institutional investors, retail brokers, retail investors like me and you, it doesn't really matter. Workhorse is out there to get more investors investing in their company. And again, why would they be doing this if they thought that the investors that they are going to bring in at these price levels are going to lose money? They wouldn't be presenting and trying to sell their vision to investors at almost $20 a share if they didn't think that these investors could see dramatic upside from where they're valued at today. And in fact, just recently I listened to one of these investor conferences live where the CEO of Workhorse, Dwayne Hughes, presented where he said that Workhorse would have refrigerated trucks in production within the next 12 months. So again, other than these financial conferences, other than Hitachi, other than these other reasons I've laid out, we can see that Workhorse is expanding their market capabilities and they're going to be getting into the refrigeration industry. On top of all of these things, Workhorse owns a 10% stake in Lordstown Motors. And as we can see by their stock price, this 10% stake is increasing in value daily as Diamond Peak Holdings stock or Lordstown increases in value or market cap. So any market cap that Lordstown gains over time, pre-merger or post-merger, 10% of that theoretically should be attributed and added to Workhorse's market cap. And Lordstown is going to beat all other full-size truck electric vehicle manufacturers to market with their Lordstown Endurance, which is really going to allow Lordstown's market cap to explode because they're going to gain that competitive advantage and their truck looks sweet. In fact, I just put in my pre-order and I'm going to be ordering one of these trucks. So last but not least, another reason I am so confident in Workhorse right now is because we've seen Kathy Woods, the Ultra Tesla Bull, very, very, very bullish on Workhorse stock. Over the past couple months, Kathy Woods has increased her position in Workhorse shares from under 200,000 shares to well over 600,000 shares in the very short term. Would she be putting this much money into Workhorse if she didn't believe that that would have great return down the line? And she's adding these shares at today's price levels. So is she really thinking that Workhorse is going to tank anytime soon? No, she's betting that the stock is going to explode in the near to long term. So I've jibber jabbered on long enough. Let's get to my price targets and where I think Workhorse is going to be at 0% of the contract received, 25%, 50%, 75%, and finally, if they receive the full contract, where do I think the stock price is going to go? Before I get into these targets, I have to say I'm not a financial advisor. These are just my opinions, so this could theoretically not be even close to where the stock price is going to go. 
after the contract is awarded to whichever company is fortunate enough to receive a portion of it. On top of this, it's important to note that Lordstown's merger with Diamond Peak Holdings is more than likely going to go into effect right around the same time that the United States Postal Service contract is announced. So, like I just mentioned, Workhorse's 10% stake in Lordstown could mean even higher prices than what I'm about to project. On top of this, my projections are taking into account zero share dilution, and share dilution is always possible, but the CFO, Steve Schrader, has come out and said that they think with their $100 million plus on their balance sheet, they can get to and into the year 2022 without having to enter the finance markets again. So first, let's start off with the doom and gloom scenario. Let's say somehow Workhorse gets 0% of the contract. I personally think this is extremely unlikely. I don't think this will happen, but it's always a possibility. So where do I think the stock price would go? Well, obviously you'd have these short-term traders that wanted to make a quick buck with the contract sell out of their position. On top of this, you'd have investors like you and me sell out because, you know, we had this United States Postal Service contract part of our bullish thesis and our vision for the company. So if they don't get any of this contract, it really should change your opinion on the company and where you think it could be valued at in the future. And there's no doubt among investors today that at least part or some of the United States Postal Service contract is in fact priced into the price today at almost $20 a share. So again, I think this is an extremely low probability, but where would it go in my opinion? In my opinion, we would see the share price fall to no lower than $10 a share, but still, that almost cuts the share price in half from where we're at today. But at $10 a share, it's hard for me to believe that you and me wouldn't choose to buy back in because at half the market cap, Workhorse would be a steal at that point, even without the United States Postal Service contract. On top of that, I can't see Kathy Woods not buying in and buying a lot of shares. Like I just mentioned, she's been buying shares at $16, $17, $18, $19 dollars a share every single day. Why would she not buy shares at $10 a share or even slightly higher if she's valuing the company where it's at today? So it's important for me to say, I think Workhorse is still a great company regardless of whether they get the United States Postal Service contract or not. So now let's move on to 25% of the contract. Where do I think we would head if we got a quarter of the $6.3 billion contract? Again, I think this is pretty low probability. I say Workhorse is going to get more than 25% of the contract. But if we get this low amount, where do I think the share price would go? I would say we will go to around $40 to $45 a share before kind of leveling out in the upper 30s. $35 a share or a little bit higher. Now we would see that initial pop because that would still be an additional $1.6 billion over the course of five years added to Workhorse's income statement. That works out to being $315 million per year in revenue. And just remember, Kodak's shares went from $2.50 to over $42 a share on a $700 million contract. And on top of that, Kodak didn't have any other catalysts in the pipeline. Workhorse has many, many, many catalysts, which I just laid out in the pipeline down the road, regardless of whether they receive the contract or not. So now with 50%, what do I think would happen? Well, this is where you would start seeing Workhorse being taken seriously. More customers would start to order their vehicles. UPS, WB Mason, FedEx, all of these companies would put in a larger order for their trucks because at that point they can see that they're not the only ones taking Workhorse seriously and taking a chance with Workhorse. So disregarding that, I believe that receiving 50% of the contract is a medium to strong probability. I don't think it's the highest likelihood, but I think it's a lot more likely than receiving 0 or 25% of the contract. Receiving 50% of the contract would mean receiving an additional 3.2 billion dollars of revenue over the course of 5 days to the balance sheet. This works out to being about 640 million dollars annually. Now, I think that workhorse shares would reach 50 to 60 dollars per share at this point. However, I think when it was all said and done after the profit takers took their profit, the swing traders took their profit, I think we would settle at the upper 40s. So 47, 48, 49 dollars per share somewhere in there. So moving on to 75% of the contract. I think personally that this is the most likely scenario for workhorse. I obviously am a workhorse bull, so I might be a little bit biased. But I think this is highly likely just judging by the things we've seen over the past few months. 
If this were to happen, I would say that workhorse stock is going to go to $65 to $70 per share. Then after the profit takers took their profit, I would say we're going to settle somewhere in the lower 60s, so under $65 per share. Now this would work out to being $4.8 billion of revenue added to the income statement over the course of five years, working down to $960 million of annual revenue added to the income statement. In addition, this would mean around a $6 billion market cap, which is really reasonable considering that this contract would contribute almost $5 billion of revenue to their income statement over the course of five years. So that's not taking into account all these other orders that they have to fill from DHL, UPS, FedEx, WME, Mason, and companies like that. So I think a $6 billion market cap at 75% of the contract is really a, an extreme likelihood. So lastly... If we get 100% of this contract, where would workhorse shares go? I personally think that this is a low to medium probability. I don't think it's going to be what happens. But if it would happen, I would think that workhorse shares are going to go to 80 to over $100 per share. And then when it was all said and done, after the profit takers take their profit, I would say we're going to settle out in the low $70 per share levels. This would mean $6.3 billion in revenue over the course of five years and $1.3 billion in revenue annually added to the income statement. At these price levels, Workhorse would have about an $8 billion market cap, which is really reasonable considering $6.3 billion in revenue is going to be added to their income statements over the course of five years. So $80 to $100 on the initial pop if we get 100% of the contract, but... After the profit takers take their profit, after the long-term holders take their profit like me, I think we're going to settle out in the low 70s. So $72, $73 per share, somewhere in there is where I would buy back into the company. So again, these projections were just my opinion. Let me know down in the comment section if you agree with me or you disagree with me, and let me know why you disagree. So in closing, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like down below if you enjoyed this video. On top of that, hit the subscribe button if you are new here or returning and not yet subscribed. I'll be back next week with a brand new video. Peace out.